Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, I've got our next Mars mission ready here. It's going to build in 35 days into Windows in 42, so that's pretty good. And what it is, is an attempt at a base on Mars. Basically, what I want to do is just land some sort of shelter and we'll try to land other things close to it. And that'll give us some practice for future missions. Uh, it does have food, water, and oxygen, and it's uh, meant to accommodate two Kerbals for a year and 85 days. That's not quite enough, but we do have the little connector ports, the KIS connector ports, and so we can connect further supplies to it. We can also connect an ISRU unit to it, uh, assuming we have the technology and everything works out. But I wanted to try this out first. It's not that expensive, actually. Um, the 62,000, and that's, you know, with the rocket alone. Uh, I guess we can see uh, 20,000 on its own. And this is the, a sort of a fine adjustment stage. It's got its own solar panels. It's actually got a fairly large controller, this Delta Avionics unit. And that's the controller for not only the payload, but also the entire J2 stage. And then uh, this is the Olympus rocket, so um, it's like this. It's got the NK-15Vs at the core and the NK-15s, well, 33s and 43s, I should have said. Anyway, you know the configuration. We've launched many rockets like this before. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, is this enough heat shielding? Now, one caveat is that... Uh, I used a 4 meter heat shield, but I've tweak scaled it up because I didn't have a heat shield that was really exactly the right size. I've kept all the blader on it just in case we'll, we'll try it out. I think we have enough margin on this mission to make that work out. I mean, uh, not including the fuel that we have up here, uh, we've got about 14,000. So that should be enough to get to Mars. And the amount of fuel that we have for landing is four, uh, 639 there. And we do have parachutes. We've got both drogue chutes and main chutes. We've got the dish for communication up there and Sputnik antennae just in case. So I think we're pretty good to go. We've even got a uh, reaction wheel, a small reaction wheel, but at least we've got one. I think that's about it. Obviously, we are not sending Kerbals along. And... We would figure that out before launching anyway. And I, I'm not entirely sure about the balance or whether it's going to wiggle like this, but I hope not. But that's basically the idea. I think it's a good way to start. I hope you will agree. And so we're going to put an egg-shaped fairing on top of this, pack it all in, and we'll be getting it on its way. Uh, what should I call it? Hmm. Well. Mars Base, oh come on, Mars Base 1, sure, why be particularly inventive at this point? Okay, so that's the fairing, okay, I think that'll more or less do the trick, so save and build. Okay, so the next thing on our plate is AGS-1, and this was launched a long time ago. I'm not entirely sure I remember what this was for. We're definitely headed into Jupiter, so that's a good thing. And yeah, we're just a day away. Let's make sure that's still the case. It's just a Jupiter encounter. Once we get there, I guess we can decide what we want to do with it. I don't think it has a whole lot of fuel. Uh, right now it's reading 1,489, but I guess we have a little bit in the probe itself. Possibly we have about 2,000. So, probably the best thing to do is just to get into orbit around Jupiter if we can, or otherwise just do flyby science. So, best thing, get into orbit, worst case scenario, just fly by. I guess we could try and fly by one of the moons. That would be good too. Incidentally, uh, you might have caught that uh, both of our spaceports are currently, well, undersupplied. Let's just say it, it keeps warning us. But they have about 60 days. So after about 60 days, we have to worry about... Well, we should worry about them well before 60 days. Let's put it that way. Um, that might be right in the middle of all of, our Jupiter uh, all of our Jupiter launches for the Voyager window. So a little bit inconvenient. Maybe we should try and take care of those before that. 
but we'll be doing the Mars launch first. And maybe we can toss something to Jupiter earlier because it seems like this window is a little bit broad. Uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock said 16 in 16 days, and this one is from uh, Transfer Window Planner. So it's possible that we could soon start launching stuff to Jupiter if we're just trying to get it to Jupiter. The more it needs the Voyager window, you know, to hit the further planets, the closer to that window it probably should be. And we could just judge by time, of course, too. Okay, anyway, uh, let me do some plotting and see what we could do with this. Well, let's get into Jupiter SOI first, and then do some plotting to see what we might be able to get away with. As far as maybe a flyby, maybe making orbit. Whatever we do here, we'll have to wait until it actually gets close to Jupiter, which is in like 75 days, so it's going to be a while before this mission comes to fruition. We'll just make the plot and then leave it be for, well, while we're doing everything else, basically, because 75 days will cover all of this time frame. Okay. Okay, well, the first order of business is to get it going the right way around Jupiter. Right now, we're sort of going retrograde, and I would like to go prograde to maximize our chances to hit moons. So that's the first thing. And unfortunately, that costs 351 meters per second. Well, at least uh, in four days it would, but maybe if we do it now, it'll be a little bit better. So let's get started. Let's... Uh jump to out here so that we can see the fuel being settled down and ignition. We will aim to be as close to Jupiter as possible to minimize the amount of delta V needed to make orbit. And then we'll try and hit the other moons after making orbit as we're doing with the Saturn mission. Okay, well that looks like a periapsis above the atmosphere of Jupiter. Uh, the atmospheric height is 1550 kilometers and we are we are above that but barely so but that's all right that's what we want okay so if we're here and that's reasonably in line with the moons and we want to make orbit how much will it cost uh well, no almost there we go uh 438 so we can make orbit but we have a sort of a closest approach there for Io, we're only 2.8 degrees away from Io. Let's check the other moons. That's not too bad for Europa either. Um, ooh, it just became briefly better before it decided to get rid of it. Mm, how about Ganymede? I mean, probably with Ganymede, we've probably already done everything. We've landed something on it after all. Okay, looks like we're going to have to be patient with it. So right at periapsis, we'll make orbit, barely, and then try and time things after that. Uh, once again, it doesn't look like we can correct our inclination with respect to the moons because both of these nodes are close to Jupiter. It would be nice if one of them was out there. That would be great. But no such luck. But anyway, it, it's doable to make orbit around Jupiter, so there's that. Is it at all possible that there's something around here we haven't done at high over Jupiter? I somehow doubt that. I Maybe the goo container. I mean, I guess we might as well. Let's observe bi biosample, and it's possible that we haven't done that high over Jupiter, because I'd usually want to reserve that for closer in. Okay, nothing with the magnetometer, nothing with the orbital telescope. There is something with the gravity scan, high over the equatorial bands, so we got that. Uh, let's, well, we haven't got it yet, we need to make sure to transmit and see if that works. And nothing with the Geiger-Muller tube, so that and the goo. Alright, transmit. And science data from space around Jupiter, so we should fulfill that contract here, right? Right? <laughs> um, from space around Jupiter. Wasn't that what we just did? Well, uh, let's try it again. Biological sample. Yeah. 
definitely said that I added the science, right? Okay, yeah, okay, that one got the science added and it did fulfill the contract. So I guess the gravity scan... Boy, the gravity scan is just messed up, I think. Darn it. I don't know. Let me, let me try it one more time. Maybe it'll work. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's over to Great Red Spot now. That's handy. Come on, uh, Kerbal. We can't miss the Great Red Spot. Thirty science added. Well, it says thirty science added, so I'll take it. All right, so this is on its way. Let's make a little alarm for when it gets to its periapsis. Hopefully, it'll be in communication, though it's a little bit tough to tell right now because Jupiter's going to be moving in its orbit. I guess not that much. It's a twelve-year orbit. Um, Earth will be there. Communication should be fine. It's periapsis is down there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be okay. On to the next thing. Okay, so taking a look at the situation, we're at August 9th, 1977, which means we're 11 days away from Voyager 2 launching. We might as well get one of our ambassador launches ready. I don't think this this transfer window that uh, transfer window planner indicated is actually like the Voyager one. Maybe the Voyager one takes a little bit more than the optimal to Jupiter, which makes sense. You know, I mean, it's about all the planets lining up right, not just the home and transfer to Jupiter. So I think maybe uh, we'll get an ambassador mission out first before we launch that Mars mission. And then we'll have the backup ambassador mission a little bit later. And maybe some of the other things, maybe a map sat or two. All of this should be... Uh, actually, you know what? I want to try out MAPSAT 1. It's a little bit of a dodgy mission because it was on the cheap and the margins are sort of tight. I, I guess maybe I should wait until that transfer. Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, see, it is a tough decision right now. Exo Moon Explorer. That, that's probably got a lot of Delta V. That's on a Nico 3340. Not an X, though, interestingly enough. That's no J2. Uh, I've got a map sat 1A, 2A. I've got a few of these. Let's let's wait on that one. Okay, all right. Ambassador, go for it. I think it's got some fuel margins. We might even be able to let it hang out around Earth if it turns out that this is a bad time. But we are only ten days away from the window, and the gap between Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 was like two weeks. It's possible that it is an okay time to launch. Jupiter's big after all. It's hard to miss it. Okay, well, here we are with our Ambassador class mission. And uh, I suppose we should line up with the moon. It's not strictly necessary, but I, I have a tradition. <laughs> I mean, it's basically come down to that, as I have a tradition. It's probably a bad idea anyway. Then again, delaying this uh, another day is not a big deal. It should be all right. Actually, we could start rolling out the next thing while the, you know this is being launched too. But we'll wait a little bit on that. Okay, so rendezvous planner. All right, here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. And ignition. Launch. First mission on the Voyager window. Here we go. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Oh, pause. Alright, booster separation. And the boosters went well. Okay, separation and ignition with fairings. Yes. Combination fairings and J2 ignition. Very good. It works. Alright, so there we have our Centaur stage. Uh, this is just the area with the probe cores. 
So we'll be going on to the centaurs after this. Do we have any uh, supplementary antennae or is it just the big one? I think it's just the big one. Well, let's not waste any time with that. It's on the RTGs anyway. Oop, wait. Okay, and... Come on, come on, come on. Shut down. 217 by 208. Alright, and... Well, it's not really showing me how much delta V I have in this stage because we've got the controllers up here and that confuses things. But... Why don't I just let MechJab handle the plotting to Jupiter and then fine-tune it from there? Because um, I, I bet I've got a lot of adjustments to make. So let's set Jupiter as a target. Um, maneuver planner. Yeah, pork chop selection. Okay, well, it's got the nice patch there. But let's say ASAP. That's in that, that nice patch is in ten days, which is basically what we expected, right? But we're a little bit early. Okay, ASAP create node seven thousand one hundred and forty-five, and that gets us to that sort of situation. But that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is Saturn. Yep. So uh, l let me work on this. I want to make sure that we've got a line. Not just to Jupiter, but we're we're at about the right height there, uh, two hundred eighty-four thousand kilometers. It's it's I, mean, I think it's like five hundred thousand kilometers away from Jupiter, what we need to be. But I want to make sure we're nice and flat and hitting Saturn. So let me work on that. Well, there we go. Um, it was it didn't take much. All I had to do was uh, change the inclination, and now you see we've uh, I, I wasn't even trying this but we got Jupiter periapsis 500,000 kilometers and we've got the Saturn encounter just by adjusting the number number for normal so that we reduce the inclination with respect to Saturn originally uh, it was passing by Jupiter sort of like it, it was going like like this but then it uh, had a bigger tilt here resulting in a higher inclination with respect to Saturn so we just flattened that out a little bit and now we have our Saturn encounter we can adjust. It's really magical, the whole Voyager thing. That's why I was so like, interested in getting a lot of missions on this. Uh, even with us being 10 days early, um, you can see it's working out very nicely. Uh, Saturn periapsis, clearly uh, at that altitude, Saturn is seriously deflecting our orbit. We won't try to adjust for Uranus right now, that would be unreasonable. Probably we'll need to do some sort of mid-course adjustment between Jupiter and Saturn to make that happen. But our Jupiter periapsis is about as expected for the Voyager window. And we should be able to get closer to Saturn. The way it works is that um, it's furthest away from Jupiter, closer to Saturn, and closer to Uranus, and then the closest to Neptune. That's the closest planet it actually passes by, if we are going to hit all of them. Some might mention trying to hit Pluto. Um, I don't see Pluto being in this window. So, uh, I mean, I guess if you wanted to skip, I guess if you could uh, skip Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, you def once you go to Saturn, there's no way you're going to Pluto, because uh, it's slower, and it's still going to be behind. And, I, yeah, it'll be really, it's not a good idea to tilt your orbit like that, because that's just slowing you down. So, but after Jupiter, it's possible we could hit Pluto, if we could just do Jupiter to Pluto. But uh, for this mission, I'm not going to aim for that right now, especially since I've already got nice and lined up with uh, Saturn. The question is, how about our stages? We know we need 7,000 meters per second. Let me temporarily bring this stage down so that we can see what our... Okay, see, we've got 10,000. Well, that's what I wanted. I think it's safe to say that we're good to go with that much delta V. Um... The caveat is that we're going to need to go all the way to burning this stage. And so we're going to take some time. We're going to need, that's 5,000 meters per second there. And that's going to take 8 minutes. And so we got another 2,000 meters per second to take out of this. We're talking about a 12 minute burn, more or less. And it is touchy as far as the time is concerned, but I don't think I have 
I, I could manually calculate it, but I don't think I have a, there's no tool to handle, you know, three different stages. I don't know if Kerbal Engineer can take three different stages into account when determining how early to start burn or MechJeb. Maybe MechJeb can. Should I tell MechJeb to execute this node? Hmm. Eh, it's probably safer not to. We're assuming a 12 minute burn, so I'm going to start to burn, um, and especially with all the staging we need to, maybe seven to eight minutes ahead of the node. Okay, it says very stable. Ignition. And that'll help us turn. Now it's pointing a little bit at the Earth, so we're going to be dropping our periapsis, but hopefully that will not be too low. We've got a little bit of room to work with. And of course, if we drop our periapsis here, that adds a little bit of efficiency as far as the whole orbit effect and going really fast is concerned. But we don't want to push that. It will be a bit close looking at it. If I have to, I'll take control and deflect it upward temporarily. Which will throw our entire plan off, but what else is new? Okay, I think that's as low as I want to get on that. Let's. Okay, we don't need the periapsis going up, but. Just moderate it a little bit. Okay, separation. Uh, that doesn't seem... Oh, right, because we need to do that ways. All right. Centaur stage. Okay, we're coming up on the node, and it looks like we are very early. Uh, that... That's maybe okay? It depends. It's tough to say. We shall see. Okay, Centaur is done, and separation, and ignition. And now we have the Asterisk 2s. Onward and upward. We should probably pay attention to how this is going, because yeah, we probably will overshoot. We've already got this escape orbit here. Fortunately, we have plenty of fuel to make corrections with. Um, power looks fine. Power looks good. Again, we don't have solar panels. It's all RTGs. So as long as it's uh, replenishing now, it should be good to go for the remainder of the mission. Okay, here we go. We can see the Jupiter approach lining up. I'm going to turn Smart ASS off and go with uh, SAS. But uh, we, we can see it's not turning out the way we want it to. Oh, wait, it's going further out now. Okay, so now we have some adjustments to make. Uh, obviously, we have our Jupiter encounter, but not our Saturn encounter. So let me make uh, that plot, and either we're going to do it close in or maybe as a mid-course adjustment. There's no particular reason to do it close in. I'll see. Alright, so we're going to have a mid-course adjustment in 225 days of about 97 meters per second, and that's going to get us to a Jupiter periapsis of 581,000 kilometers, and a Saturn periapsis of 144,000 kilometers, and uh, we it's too sensitive right now to actually hit Uranus with it. But uh, we are aimed at Uranus, so we're, we've got a good trajectory after Saturn if we do this burn. Uh, but right now, if even with a one hundredth of a meters per second, uh, I, I couldn't get it to hit Uranus right now. Okay, come on, cursor. All right, and after that, we, we're uh, aimed ahead of Neptune, which is what we want. So that's good, too. All right, so uh, we, we can at least do the normal Voyager thing with this ambassador probe. It's got some science to it, lots of goo containers, and plenty of RTGs. And it is tuned to Earth. So everything is A-OK. -okay. Let's get this alarm on. And it looks like the windows, uh, the timing is good, so we might as well uh, go on with our next launch to 
the outer planets. Okay, so here's our second launch. This is MAPSAT-1, and so it's supposed to get into orbit around one of the moons of either Jupiter or Saturn or something to scan. And so we're going to throttle up SAS on, and we're going to hope, but MAPSAT-1 has less delta-v than either of the other MAPSATs. We've got uh, MAPSAT-2, we've got MAPSAT-1A and MAPSAT-2A, so eh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It might not, well, we'll probably have to send it to the easiest one to make orbit around, which might be Callisto, uh, as, since we don't have a heat shield to, like, make orbit around Titan, though. I wonder about trying to use Titan's atmosphere to slow down now. Anyway, our throttle is up, and so ignition. Okay, getting ready for booster separation and separation. All of them are off. Leaves us with four NK-43 engines. Okay, I'm gonna separate the fairings at this point. It's a little bit risky, but let's try it. They're a little bit long is the thing. Oh, actually, it's only the top part. My mistake. That's marginally safer. So this does have the resource scanner. Should probably send one over to Mars as well, huh? But I don't think we have yet. Maybe I can make a small satellite for that. Build it quickly. Alright, separation. And ignition. Alright, let's get everything settled up here. Uh, well, it's got some commutrons. Let's activate those. And I guess there's no harm deploying the scanner. I wonder if it'll function properly in realism overhaul or not. It is labeled non-RP0. It shouldn't be able to perform our orbital survey now. Okay, well it gives us the stable polar orbit and the altitude thing. So hopefully it'll work out for us. Okay, we're gonna have somewhat of a lopsided orbit this time. Ooh, maybe more lopsided than I thought. Okay, let's shut down right there. 279 by 167. And we'll just, uh, we'll send this over to Jupiter. I think that's the best plan. And try to get it scanning Callisto, which is the easiest one to get a uh, satellite into orbit around when it comes to Jupiter's moons, given that we only have the four Galilean ones in here right now. But that's a good start. I mean, let's face it, if you're looking for resources, maybe, well, I don't know, a lighter moon would have been nice. You know, it's easier to uh, land on and leave. But the, uh, yeah, Callisto might be good. Let's see. All right, well, bad news. It looks like after our transfer, in order to get into a similar orbit as Callisto, like uh, uh, even though there's still some extra inclination, at least the same level, we're talking about, um, well, that burn there is almost 6,000. So with this 7,000, that's more delta V than we have. Is it possible that if we get into a loose one and we try and burn for orbit with Callisto's help, you know, uh, in its SOI, maybe that'll help, but I don't know. This is already much more than some of our previous missions that we got into the Jupiter system required, so I guess we're going a little bit faster on this transfer window. So yeah, uh, not, not the greatest of situations, but we'll send it over there and see what happens. Just for you to know, I did try a few things. Some of you will suggest that I go close to Jupiter and then uh, and then make the adjustments after that, taking advantage of Jupiter's uh, gravity. Turns out uh, that took about the same. Uh, getting close to Jupiter 
um, to get into orbit was about 3,200 and then matching orbits and that's dropping one end close to Callisto and then boosting back up again uh, ended up costing a little bit more than 6,000 altogether. So, and I also uh, tried aiming for Saturn. Uh, I tried seeing if it would be a good idea to try and make orbit around uh, its outermost moon, Iapetus, I, I assume. Uh, that's how it's pronounced. And uh, that didn't work. Obviously, Titan will be tougher uh, being closer in. So, uh, it's possible that uh, if we go really close in and take advantage of Saturn's gravity to uh, cat but then dropping our orbit all the way down in here is tough so it doesn't really matter if we're not aero breaking all right so but we'll do this transfer send it over to Jupiter and see what we can do uh, we do have 4,700 meters per second to work with uh, will that be enough to do anything right now it doesn't seem like it but this was the launch this was the mapsat launch with the least Delta V, so hopefully our future ones will be better off. Okay, all lined up. Let's make sure the fuel is settled down. Seems that way. And ignition. Given that we're using the J2 for this part, maybe I should have waited a little bit longer since this will be done in two minutes. Hmm, I haven't been as diligent this time. We had better raise our periapsis soon or we're going to be in trouble. Uh, oh, speaking of diligent. Oh boy. I was neglectful. I was looking at something else. Okay, and we're not stabilizing this fuel either. We're also not really pulling away from that. I don't know why that is. Okay, we've we've got an interesting Oh, because that's a, no okay, stop that. Stop it. RCS off here, because this is continually pushing against us. We can't separate from it. Oh, but we have no connection. And the game crashed. Well, this is just a bundle of fun, isn't it? So, yeah, there's no probe core down here. And there's no connection. Well, but without a probe core, how is there going to be a connection? Well, this is quite a cliffhanger, but I'll, I'll try and resolve it right now. It's, it's not a good situation, but it looks like maybe our probe will survive, even though it's going to 106 kilometers and going 10,000 meters per second. We'll find out. Okay, we are trying to get back to the mission. I have no idea what state it'll be in. So let's see, map sat one. And that should be the mission part because the air part's just pure debris. And who knows? Who knows? What is it going to look like? Oh. Okay, that wasn't right. Let's see. Well, no, it still has two ignitions. So I think we are uh, prior to the burn at this point. We do have the node. And so we get to start over. Yay, and this time not go inside the atmosphere. That's a plus. All right, checking that the fuel is settled. It is, so here we go, again. I wanna make sure to activate the comm dish. Okay, so I'm going to turn away from the node now to prevent going into the atmosphere this time. Okay, so last time I think the reason why we weren't selling the fuel down was because of atmospheric pressure. Uh, but let's, uh, let's throw down here before 
and then separate, okay, and then throttle up, and make sure everything is settled, yes it is, and ignition. Okay, so we'll cut it close, but we're not going to be re-entering the atmosphere this time. Alright, the RL-10 stage is wrapping up here. And separation. And... Ooh, you sort of got caught there. Okay, ignition. Alright, no explosions that time. You know, taking a look at our approach here to Jupiter, um, it seems like Mechjeb has us going for a fast sort of transfer there. It it should be possible to hit it, you know, at a slower location, which would make it easier to make orbit around one of the moons. I mean, see, we're, we're uh, it's aiming us for that really fast orbit, which is good for transferring to Saturn and all, but we're not looking to transfer to Saturn. So, let's see. I think we've still got targeted as our target, but it's not really showing that very well. Okay, let's hold on a sec. Let me take a look at what we can manage here. Maybe a mid-course adjustment would be better than finishing the burn at this point. So that's our current approach. Okay, so let's say we do that, and that costs 240. And then we try and make orbit there. Will it be better? Will we have enough delta V? And specifically delta V to match the orbit of Callisto? Um, 5,000, but, but that's better than 6,000. Um, well, uh, let's give it a go. Maybe we can fine-tune this a little bit more, but that's a mid-course adjustment. We've already got an encounter with Jupiter. We just need to get the right sort of encounter with Jupiter. And so I'm going to add that alarm. And we've got our second mission underway. So uh, with that, I'll uh, leave it there, and then we've got eight more missions to send on the Voyager window, but we, we'll break it up a little bit. We'll break it up with uh, the two supply missions, one to the Earth Orbit Station and one to the Lunar Orbit Station, and also with the Mars uh, Surface Base mission. And so, yeah, lots of missions to send out, many launches. Uh, I hope you will be looking forward to the next few episodes. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.